Blessings Divine Reflection, welcome back to my channel. It's such an honor to have you here. If you're new here, my name is Idalis. I'm a Reiki energy healer, a spiritual healer, a consciousness bridger, okay? And I offer one-on-one -on -one private sessions. To book a session, all you have to do is click the link in my bio. On this channel, though, I love to talk about esoterica and topics that aren't necessarily widely known, but I also give you practical tools to integrate this knowledge into your own spiritual journey. So if that's something that interests you, please consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell so you never miss a video and every single week you can get notified for when I post spiritual knowledge and ways to uplift your consciousness and heal your vibration. In today's video, we are going to be talking about different types of sun gods and ways to honor the sun. We're going to get into six different types of sun gods today. We're going to be talking about Saint Brigid. We're going to be talking about the god Ra, the Egyptian god. We're going to be talking about Sol, the Norse god, Surya, who is an Indian god, and we're also going to be talking about Apollo slash Helios, as well as the yellow corn mother of the Taino people. And to honor the sun is to honor the natural cycles of nature, right? And when we're in harmony with the cycles of nature, we become more harmonious and balanced in ourselves and we also and honoring this natural cycle is also a way to honor a higher power right as well as to incorporate ancient knowledge and ancient ways into your modern daily life so if you are interested in reconnecting with the cycles of nature and of course with the sun and all of its power then keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the video. Okay, so the first goddess that we are talking about today is named Saint Bridget, and this was an actual living, breathing saint. She is also known as Bridget of Kildare, or Bridget of Ireland, and is the patron saint of Ireland. She is also associated with the pre-Christian goddess named Bridget as well, and was worshipped in pagan times. The name Bridget actually means high or exalted, and in Roman times she was invoked as a nymph goddess, and there are several myths and stories surrounding her existence of her conjuring streams of water, bodies of water, at her feet. So the element of water is also associated with her being as well as the element of fire. She is mostly associated with fire and is known as a fire goddess. Due to her ability to have performed miracles, right, and blessings over the span of her life, there was a sacred fire lit in her honor that would be continuously lit in this temple in Ireland, which she built and commissioned. This sacred fire was surrounded by a bush and it was said that whoever crossed the bush would have, you know, infinite bad luck or would be like cursed forever. Some of the miracles she was able to perform in her life and some of her life's work included being extremely generous to the poor. She's also known for turning water into beer and also was able to cure people of their birth defects and illnesses and due to her complete devotion to God through her chastisement she was able to channel the spirit of you know her God. Saint Bridget died on February 1st and is celebrated on February 1st and sometimes the second and this day is known as Imbolc and marks the first day of spring. Some of her symbols include the lamb as well as a torch 
or a candle can also be lit in her honor as well as the shepherd's staff. St. Bridget rules over inspiration, healing, blacksmithing, and is also a protective deity. To honor St. Bridget, you can create a Bridget's cross. You can also wear her sacred symbols, of which include a cross of equal length um, vertically and horizontally, with a circle surrounding it, as well as the triketra, the symbol of the goddess, and she is also a triple goddess. The cauldron is also one of her symbols, as it is a representation of fire as well. And some foods you can eat on February 1st or the 2nd, whichever day you choose to celebrate in bulk or Bridget, if you so choose, include poppy seeds. You could also mix in rosemary and thyme into your dishes, as well as berries and seeds, any types of seeds. And this day is, you know, a representation of spring and what's to come, you know, a blooming, a becoming, as well as various types of milks or breads. Okay, next up we have the Egyptian sun god, Ra. Now, Ra has the head of a falcon as well. On top his head, he has the sun disk, which around it wraps a serpent. Ra is known as the self-created one, the prime creator and the giver of life who harnessed the power of Heka, who was the god of magic in order to create all things. Ra rules over the sky as well as the underworld and welcomes new life into the underworld. He also rules the middle realm of earth and as well rules over order and kings and kingship and queens too, probably. Ra also takes on various forms, one of them being Ra Harakti. Ra was once honored along with the sky god Horus. They were at one point honored as one. There was also Atun Ra, who was the first being upon Earth. The Egyptian sun god Ra's symbols include the falcon, the Menevis bull, who Ra would incarnate as, and the Menevis bull was centered at Iunu, or Heliopolis, which is in Cairo. And of course, the ancient symbol of the Eye of Ra is probably his most well-known symbolic form, and he is also often depicted carrying the sacred Ankh at Iunu, or Heliopolis, this place of the Menevis Bull was also called the City of Pillars as there were many obelisks and pyramids built in honor of Ra at this location and around Egypt. So the pyramid and the obelisk are also symbols of Ra and can be used to worship this deity. It is also said that Ra created Bastet, Hathor, and Sekhmet from his eye. So those three goddesses are, you know, very linked with Ra. In his form as Atun Ra, he created the nine, which were nine gods that were birthed from, from him. And his holiday in the Gregorian calendar is May 26th. Alrighty, next up we have Helios slash Apollo. So Helios was worshipped in ancient Greece and it was said to ride a golden chariot carried by four horses across the sky every day. There was also a 33 meter high statue of Helios constructed in the ancient city of Rhodes called the Colossus of Rhodes and was actually one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Later on, Helios became conflated with the god Apollo, who was a god of archery, music and dance, the sunlight, the sun and light, oracles, knowledge, herds, flock, 
and also protected the young, as well as helped to ward off evil. Apollo's symbols include the lyre, also a symbol of lyre and star seeds, as well as the laurel wreath, which would be worn by champions that won in the Olympic Games, would often be crowned with these laurel wreaths, right? And his symbols also include the python as well as the bow and arrow. Apollo is also the twin brother of the goddess Artemis, who is the goddess of the hunt and the moon. I talk about moon goddesses in this video, all about lunar goddesses, which you should definitely check out. And of course, you can celebrate Apollo on Sunday, which is the day of the sun. You could also work with any of his sacred metals. You could work with bronze, you could work with gold or even brass as metals are seen as alchemical elements, which alchemy and magic are also associations with the sun. Okay, next up we have Surya. Surya is a Hindu sun god slash goddess who also is the ruler of the planets. Surya is depicted with a conch shell, a wand, as well as the Dhamma Chakra, which is a prominent symbol within both Hinduism and Buddhism, and also rides a chariot carried by seven horses, actually. And each of her seven horses represent the seven spectrums of light, as well as the seven days of the week, which also have associations with all of the seven planets, or the seven planets that were seen in ancient times that were visible at that time. Surya created Manu, who was the creator of mankind. Surya created Yama, who was the god of the dead. And Yami, who was the goddess of the Yamuna River, as well as Karna, who was a great warrior um, that is talked about in the Mahabharata, which is a sacred and central text in Hinduism. Surya helps to dispel darkness, cure disease and illness, and illuminates the world. Within Buddhism, Surya is also said to reside within shrines and helps to protect shrines as well. Surya took on less of a prominence due to the gods Vishnu and Brahma kind of taking on her role in terms of, you know, creating that order and being a creator god. However, there are still festivals that take place in her honor in India. Some of these festivals include Makar Sankranti, the Harvest Festival Pongal, Samba Dashami, Ratha Saptami, Chaf Puja, and Kumbha Mela, which is mentioned in Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and Surya also appears in the Gayantri Mantra, which you can find online and you can listen to this mantra as a way to invoke the spirit of Surya. And next up we have Sol, who is not to be confused with the Roman god Sol and is mentioned in Germanic mythology and folklore. Sol is famously mentioned in the poetic Ida as well as the prose Ida, which were Old Norse poems dating back to the 13th century. Sol is also mentioned as Balder, meaning prince, so it seems that this deity took on many different forms. Sol was the sister of the moon, whose name was Mani. In Germanic mythology, it is said that after creating the sky, the gods created the sun out of molten sparks, out of this fiery realm within the heavens named Muspelheim, and then set the sun in the sky. It is said that Sol also drives a chariot by horses across the sky. Only in this mythology, Sol is chased by a mythological wolf named Skol. 
And when Skull catches up to the sun enough and takes a bite out of it, this is what causes eclipses, <laughs> or was said to have caused eclipses. And when Soul finally does swallow the sun, or when Skull finally would swallow the sun, this would cause the beginning of Ragnarok, which was essentially, you know, an end of days within Old Norse mythology, which would cause natural disasters, which would cause various gods to die within the Norse pantheon, and would also cause, you know, the world to be consumed by water. So <laughs> the Norse personification of the sun is, is a little more laced with fear, but if you are connected with, you know, Germanic culture and history or you know Norse culture and history so you know like Norwegian or Icelandic you might want to as well honor this deity as your ancestors honored this deity to connect with their magic as well as you know invoke the sun's energy soul was also connected to healing boulder it is said that one of his horse's ankles broke or you know was injured and in order to heal one of his horses it is said that soul sang charms along with their sister and the god odin sang a charm over boulder's horse and this helped to restore the horse's well-being. This was known as the Merseburg incantations or the horse cure. So horses are also associated with this deity as mentioned. Some plants associated with Sol, the Norse god, include boulder's brow, which is actually a form of chamomile that is scentless and is known as scentless mayweed and can be found in Eurasia, North Africa, and is also found in North America. You've probably seen it growing out of sidewalks or, you know, scattered within fields. You could even make a tincture out of these flowers, if not to just enjoy and honor and perhaps ask them if they want to be picked. And then lastly, we have the yellow corn mother of the Taino people. And the Taino people are indigenous people of the Caribbean, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica. The Taino people still hold festivals in honor of the yellow corn mother at midsummer. The yellow corn mother is also a Native American goddess who rules over abundance, fertility, children, energy, the harvest, health, grounding, providence, and strength. The yellow corn mother is said to have been an old woman who was able to produce corn by rubbing her skin. Apparently for this reason, she was accused of being a witch and was feared. Before her death, she told the people how to cure for her corpse, how to care for it. And out of her dead body sprouted crops, and from her grave there sprouted an abundance of food for the people. For those who don't know, corn was, you know, seen as a sacred grain was one of the main harvests of native and indigenous peoples. She was also said to have taken in foster children before her death and, you know, was a friend to those less fortunate. You can invoke the yellow corn mother by, you know, wearing her sacred colors of yellow and perhaps oranges and browns. And then obviously you can use corn, create meals, of corn at her altar. You could honor her at, say, midsummer, the summer solstice, and perhaps even burn candles or create your own mini festival, you know, a sacred dance ceremony for the yellow corn mother to call in abundance, perhaps call in fertility, birthing of creation, of projects, of ideas 
ideas of inspiration or even creativity as well and that is all of these sun gods that i have for you today let me know down below which sun god or goddess you resonated most with i would love to know let me know how you're going to incorporate any of these deities into your daily life, into your spiritual practice. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share this video with anyone who you think might enjoy it or need it and subscribe, darling. There will be another video next week and you won't want to miss it. Subscribe to the email list, check out the blog, check out the socials. I love you so much. Mm -hmm.